All right, I have tried to shoot a video about the alpine butterfly and the butterfly bend on five separate occasions across maybe 20 total takes in the past. Let's see if we can do it correctly this time. <laughs> uh, this was actually supposed to be the very first not instructional that I shot. Anyway, wait, this is for the Essentials playlist. You may notice this is the second loop that I have on this list. And the reason for that is because these two things serve very different purposes. Or they can. <laughs> They're both fixed loops, for one, but they have very, very different properties. You notice, for example, that when I tie a butterfly loop like that, that the actual tying is done, the, the major portion is done with a tuck like that. And as such, I don't actually need access to the ends of the line in order to put one on, as you do for a bowline, double bowline, water bowline, all kinds of bowline that requires you to have both ends where this does not, although there is a bowline method that you can tie in a bite. Not the point right now. The release on this is very simple. Just pull here and it will come apart. And I've tied this on camera like 20 times now. Uh, put one of those back on. There we are. And we'll also you can also tell very easily that the loop emerges perpendicularly to the line itself. This is very handy, and you can also easily make a bend out of this by just, like, snipping this right here. It's symmetrical, it's based on an overhand, but doesn't have the nasty, nasty jamming properties that an overhand knot has. So, spoken word instructions. We're going to switch to the gray one now. Wrap around once, wrap around twice. On your third pass, put it in the middle of your first two wraps. So if you were doing it really quickly, you could wrap twice and then just make sure that your third pass lands in the middle. Now you're going to take the one of the end closest to your fingers and tug on it to give yourself some slack. Then you're going to go put that into your palm and then it's going to follow your fingers underneath these two right here. Then keep it straight. Pull your standing and working ends, if you can even call them that, straight relative to one another. And you notice that when you do that, it tightens in the middle, but not on the wings. The, the little butterfly wings right there are unaffected. You also have to, if you want it super solid, you need to pull down here as well, but that means that this lateral tension does not increase the tightness of the knot. That is a very handy property for untying. Now, the Trixie method. Grab the loop and, and grab a bite in your palm turn in a direction. doesn't matter which direction. As long as you turn in the same direction the second time, you notice it's from the top left to the bottom right over the top, and it's the same way here. Those extras should look the same, because otherwise you will run into problems. Then pass into your palm, same as before, and follow your fingers on the way out, same as before. Pull those ends away from one another, and you have this nice little loop right there. Now, a concern. I've talked a little bit about horrible capsizing of knots in the past. One, and This is one of the ones that you can tie terribly and catastrophically wrong by pulling this way. You see what happens there? That is no good. We don't like... <laughs> That's not going to be, that does not serve our function. We have 
the ability to correct it for, because of the way that I tied it right here was not as tightly loaded as that could have been, but you can very easily mess that up considerably and just keep folding it and folding it further and further and further, and it's horrible for everyone. You can see what happens here? That's not going to correct itself when you tug on it. Uh, that is a bad time. All right, while I'm untying this, uh, there we are. That did not take nearly as long as I thought. Okay. Um, you can also use this as a bend, as I demonstrated before. The process is very much the same, although the Trixie method for that is considerably harder. Put your first two passes as normal. Now, here's the different part. Get, get over there. Cross in an X the first time. When you go around, catch your other end and pull up so that there will be an X somewhere on the back there. You don't need to go around and check because if you it's just turn on one side, turn on the other side, and they're caught together into your palm and follow the end fingers out. Ah, now see that can happen, especially when you're tying the bend. So <laughs> We're going to repeat this down for one. Ah. See, a trouble that I just ran into just there is when you learn to tie one, something one way, you get very flustered if you start tying it the opposite handedness. Right. Success! Okay, now you. Ah. Remember that property of it tightening the not without tightening the loop. Well, there is no loop this time, there's just these free ends, and having these able to either freely adjust down or leave somewhat loose but not too loose is a considerable advantage for a bend because that means that this, these wings here, not being over tight, uh, tightening down too much, lets us untie that bend as freely as we like having them emerge on the same side when you've done it correctly is mildly convenient as well. Now, um, as for improper ties, because like many, many knots, this one has mavericks like that. When you're going and doing the Trixie method, yeah, it was the Trixie method, but I'm sure you can find a way to do it uh, using the looping method. Okay, so normally you're supposed to do the X's this way. Alright, what happens when you go the other way? Well, this is very, very bad. Now, that should... Uh, nope. Alright, you wind up with a half hitch up here and a half hitch down here, and that's all that's holding that loop stable, which means that at any point you can and flip that out and pull that off and that's just a slip knot catastrophic failure beware quick insert with two methods that I had nearly forgotten the overhand methods start by tying an overhand knot right there keep an eye of the handedness and notice that that just about forms the left wing of the butterfly take your working end from your right side and put it in between right there. You see that little pretzel gap come out on the side that is towards the little dangly bit right there. See how they're coming out on the same side? Move up and then follow the silver line out the same way. If you've done it correctly, you'll still see that nice cross in the front. Your other method, I'm just going to slide down, is for the loop. Tie an overhand, slip right there, and then form the right wing. And we need to emerge out of the right wing 
and going to the right side, so that has to come out that little space and go this way. There we are. Or, alternatively, I can pull that back out, tie an overhand knot, pass it around something, put it back up, form your right wing, pass it underneath the left wing, and through the hole in the right wing. And there we are. Okay, three methods I was missing. Back to our regularly scheduled program. The butterfly loop is something that I use frequently, especially because of the super fast Trixie method to put a loop in the middle of something that drops down. And because of it, the way that it takes weight, it can be very uh, symmetrically, more or less, along all of the three of its major sides. It's very useful for a trucker's hitch, which, unlike that horrible, horrible song, is not very difficult to tie whatsoever. It's um, more of a family, really. Click through this knot right here, and you will find my discussion of the trucker's hitch, not the song, and it, the various concepts that surround it. If this instructional video has been useful to you, you can give me a subscription to see more videos of mine like this in the future. You can visit my shop to see things like this, which I am in the middle of putting back together. I was lazy after the last time that I untied it. You can see it in the previous video. Click through here to find that previous video. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can give me a like to raise my ranking in search results, and you can share this video around to people who need to learn how to tie knots. You know who you are, or worse, you don't know who you are. <laughs> if somebody has sent you this video, it's because they're telling you to, to learn to tie knots. If you want to see all of the videos on this playlist really super fast, here is my rapid fire playlist video. I also talk about knives, like this is my little knife flip video, periodically. Alright, thank you very much for watching.